Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. This is Erica from Confessions of a Homeschooler and today for our Tip Tuesday we're going to start a short series of videos where I'm going to help teach your students how to take notes, how to study for tests, um, how to just review and um, study in a more um, effective and efficient manner. So work smarter not harder, right? So today we're going to talk about how to effectively take notes from either a lecture or a textbook. Now um, there's several different ways to do this. I'm going to show you a couple of our favorite ways and things that we are trying this year that um, are working out for us pretty well. And I'm also going to talk to you a little bit about when to start teaching this to your children. So I think as far as um, studying for tests and taking notes and things like that, it probably doesn't really come in until you're in about fifth or sixth grade, it kind of depends on what curriculum you're using and if you're in a traditional school it might come in more around fifth grade. If you're homeschooled, um, definitely start it around sixth grade if you haven't already started it yet. Now, um, when your kids are younger, say, um, you know, kindergarten, first, second, third, and fourth grades, you're probably doing a lot of group work at home, and you're probably also doing a lot of verbal reviewing with them, and I think that's great. Um, as a teacher, I would ask out questions for, say, science or history or whatever we were studying, and then my kids would raise their hands, and we would all kind of take turns answering and sharing answers, and we kind of did all of our studying as a group, and I think that's a great way to do it when you're younger. It kind of helps kids learn the general process of studying for something or reviewing information um, but as the teacher what you're really doing is you're choosing what you're reviewing you're the one asking them the questions and so what you need to then do once they get a little bit older is transition it into them understanding what things to write down what things to study and things like that so you want to teach them what they need to study so um, if you do have younger kids one of the things I suggest doing is teaching them asking them questions and then turning the tables and letting one of them be the teacher for that session and let them ask the questions and then everybody else can answer and you can kind of rotate if you have a single um, like just one child you can kind of just take turns asking questions back and forth and studies have shown that when you are asking the questions you are also learning at the same time so it's a great way to um, to learn by asking and by answering the questions. So if you are in fifth grade and up or sixth grade and up, depending on your curriculum, now is the time to start learning how to take effective study notes and then how to actually study that information so that you retain it and remember it and all of those kinds of things. So today what we're gonna talk about is how to take notes. Now I know there's a lot of different methods. I'm gonna show you some of our favorite methods. There's also the question of what do I actually write down? I know that was one of the hardest things for my kids to do or to figure out is what do we need to know? What do we need to write down? What do we need to study? And so I'm gonna show you using one of our textbooks as an example today, the things that you need to write down, how you can kind of pull information out of a book or out of a lecture if you're sitting in a class um, or doing something online so that you can take effective study notes to help you remember and then go forth to study for your test and do a good job on that. All right, so I have a couple easy tips on learning how to take notes. Now, most of your textbooks will have bolded prints, headers on paragraphs, chapter headers, comprehension questions at the end, and those are all good places to start out with. So you'll want to pay attention to anything in your textbook that is bolded, um, write down your chapter headings, and then take a look at those chapters um, or the paragraphs, and then you're going to just pull out a few keywords and points out of each one, and that's what you're going to be writing down in notes. Now I'll show you exactly how to do that in just a second. The other tip I have for you is to use colors or pictures wherever you possibly can. So for example, if you have vocabulary words or special places or dates or events, highlight those somehow, maybe draw a picture that will help you remember what they are, but by color coding your notes it makes it a lot easier to go through and then when you're reviewing and studying. So for example, for all the vocabulary words, maybe highlight those in green. That way when you're going back and studying for your test, you can focus just on the vocabulary. It will be really easy for you to flip through your notes and look for just the green items. Um, or if you're going back, you'll visually remember if you have pictures in there to help you remember like an important battle or a date or a person. So if you can put pictures associated with those, that's also really helpful. And Another great way to help memorize information is to use mnemonic devices. Now you probably have all heard about Roy G. Biv and that is just the way to remember the colors of the rainbow. So here's a gra graphic that illustrates that for you. And as you can see, the letters are in order 
red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. And just by remembering the Roy G. Biv acronym, then you can then remember the colors of the rainbow. And you can apply that to all kinds of things. Another mnemonic device that they have used is PEMDAS or Please Excuse My Dear Aunt Sally. And that is just simply the order of math operations. And it's just an easy way for if you are taking a test or even just doing your math on a regular basis to remember what order you're going to do your problems in. So mnemonic devices can also be super helpful. Um, the other thing that I have for you as a tip is to create flashcards from your notes to study from. And I will do a whole video on how to create flashcards, how to study from them um, in our next video. But just something to keep in mind, our flashcards are a great study tool. Also, you're writing the information down again, which is helping you remember as well. And you can do pictures and colors and all kinds of stuff on those as well. But we'll get into that in a later video. The other tip I have for you is not to write down everything. The point of taking notes is not to make your life horrible. The point of writing notes is to help you take out what's important in a text that you've written or in a lecture that you have watched, write down the basic points, and then you can study those points. It's very difficult to memorize an entire paragraph or several pages worth of content in your brain. However, if you can pull out just the basic points, write those down in your notes, and again, I'll show you how to do that in just a second, but write those down in your notes. It's a lot easier to try and remember just bullet points, basic um, you know, thoughts, concepts, things like that, versus whole big long strings of text. So I'm gonna show you now how to take effective notes, how to know what to write down, and what your notes can potentially look like that will hopefully help make it a lot easier for you to study. Hopefully it will make your note taking a lot less boring, and, um, and it will also make it easier for you to study, retain the information, and then do well on tests and exams. So let's take a look at a few popular note taking strategies, and um, hopefully this will help you out. All right, so now where people get most tripped up is what to write down. They don't know what to study. They're not quite sure what to pull out. So we're going to just use one of my daughter's textbooks here. Now some of the supplies you're going to want to have on hand for successful note taking is some kind of paper to write on. So we just have one of these just regular spirals. Um, I also like to have a ruler, some highlighters, of course your textbook. Um, I also like to have some of these little flags so that I can mark important things. You could also use these for maybe important dates or just whatever it is that you need to focus focus on some area maybe that you have a hard time remembering, flag that and that you know you have to study. Um, the other thing I like to do are these are friction erasable pencils or pens. Now you can take notes in pencil as well, whatever you're more comfortable with. One of the nice things about these pens, however, is that they are erasable. So you can write things with them and then you can erase which is really, really nice, especially when you're taking notes because it keeps your notes nice and neat and organized. Now, the first thing that I do before I take notes is I take my ruler and just a little ways in from my side over here, I will write um, a line and I just draw that down the center of my paper just like that. And now on this side, I'm going to write just anything that is specific I need to remember. So on this side, I would write maybe people, like names. I would write any important dates. We all know that dates are always on tests. Um, I would write uh, events and you might also want to write locations or places and then the last thing would be maybe vocab words. Okay, so now we've got kind of the basics over here. Now you're obviously not going to write this. You're going to write the actual person's name or the actual date. Then on this side of the tab, I just do bullet points. I guess it's called bullet point note taking. I'm not really sure what you would call it, but that's what we do here. And what you're going to do is just write down any information over here that might go with this person. Okay and so on down. What happened at this date? Well, there was some kind of a war or, you know, something happened. So all you're going to do all the way down is write bullet points. And I like to say less is more when you're taking notes. And I'll show you how to do that over here in just a second. But you basically don't want to rewrite your textbook. That's what you have your book for. It take you way too um, long to, first of all, rewrite all of this. And then when you go back through and you're trying to memorize information and facts, it's way too much information for your brain to take in. So I keep this side to a few words. Um, I try to maybe use abbreviations where I can. Um, just the basic basic facts for whatever I've written on this side. The other important thing that you're going to want to write are any kind of headers. So say you're doing, this one is section 5.4, so at the top of this one I would write that at the top. So let's go ahead and show you what that's going to look like. Oh, the other thing I wanted to say really quickly is um, I would 
probably color code these things so maybe just make yourself a little card here and anything um, that is going to be a person that you need to remember you could highlight in green places could be pink dates blue and vocab green and I didn't have a, a location or a landmark or whatever on here so you've got um, dates are blue and you don't want to use too many colors oh I did it backward but people can be yellow you don't want to use too many colors on here because otherwise your paper just starts looking really muddled and kind of crazy um, however you can um, you know kind of color code it you're not going to have all of this on one page you're going to kind of want to um, just keep it to a bare minimum you don't want like a thousand colors everywhere the other thing you can do is draw pictures and things like that and I'll kind of show you some of my daughter's notes but let's just do a sample paragraph here all right so I'm going to draw my little line over here okay and we have shellfish and sea stars so I would just probably write 5.4 shellfish and sea stars okay so that's my chapter title so I know what it is that this page is going to be full of now you're going to want to pay attention to right here you'll have um, paragraph headings and within that paragraph you're also going to have subheadings and other words that are bolded and some words that are italicized so let's see if I can get a close-up here for you for that all right so as you can see these little um, slanty words are called italicized and there's a definition right behind that that's probably something you need to know words like this that are in bold print you're also probably going to want to write those down so those are the kind of easy ones to pull out but the first way you're going to do it is I would write down mollusks because this section is talking about mollusks so I definitely want to write that down now over here I just want to write a few bullet points that I read in my chapter so many beautiful shellfish wa wash up along the ocean shores because of their soft color and interesting shapes seashells can be fun to collect. People have used shells to make jewelry and works of art. Indians use white and purple parts for a certain type of clam shell for wampum or money. Um, wampum. The shells were broken and filled into little beads, then strung onto threads or belts. Shell sh uh, seashells are the houses of small invertebrates called mollusks. Because mollusks have soft body, they need their shells or exoskeletons for protection. Mollusks that are used for food are often called shellfish. Okay, so what do we want to pull out of that? Now, if you've done IEW writing, what they do is for each sentence, they have you pull out just a couple of key words and just write those down to help you remember what this section was about. Now, you don't want to rewrite keywords for every single sentence because you'll be writing a ton of information you just want to pull out the key things so I think that people you know there's an introductory here seashells are fun to collect blah 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 we probably want to write down this italicized word so they use let's see clam shells so I would write clam shell and maybe just an arrow over here um, and what it is it's called wampum or and they used it for money okay now I'm not writing a whole lot of words I'm using some symbols and that way my hand isn't getting tired and it's a lot easier for me to remember the other little thing that I want to say is let's see small invertebrates called mollusks okay I definitely want to remember the definition so they are small invertebrates okay and I might actually want to highlight or underline this in green because that is a definition okay and I want to remember that um, let's see because they have soft bodies they need their shells which are exoskeletons so I probably also want to write exoskeleton which basically means um, hard shell okay you can also write that they have soft bodies here if you want Okay, and then that's pretty much the basic information out of this entire thing. So as you can see, it's a lot easier to write just this little bit of information versus trying to memorize this whole thing or learn this whole thing or whatever. And then you're going to just move on and repeat that process for the other chapters. So down here they've got a univalves, and I would again just start right here, univalves. Okay, what do I need to know about univalves? And then I would definitely pull out anything in bolded print, anything in italics, anything that looks like a definition, and that kind of thing. And then after you're done taking your notes, you can go back and maybe highlight things. Okay, so this was um, 
a definition, I need to know that, or whatever. And that's the best way to go through and try and pull notes out of your books. Now all of your books are going to be a little bit different. Once you get older, you might not have all of these bolded prints, but most textbooks will have bold print for you. They will have definitions. The definitions might even be like, you know, somewhere on the side or whatever. You just have to look. Now the other thing I quickly want to show you that's good to do is to look at the end of, say, your chapter. This is a section. This book always has comprehension questions at the end for that section, and then at the end of the chapter, they will also have a chapter five review. So you are gonna want to make sure that you can answer all of the questions here. Now you can either write them all down, or what I encourage my kids to do is to look at these and make sure that they can answer these questions from the notes that they have taken before while reading it. If they answers to these questions are not in their notes, I have them add that answer to their note or that little area or wherever it belonged in the text because it just means they didn't maybe pull out the right thing when they were studying. That does two things. One, it makes certain that your notes are clear, comprehensive, they got all of the main topics. The other thing it does is help you as you're going back to look up items, you're remembering it more because you're writing it down again. So you can write down all these. It's a lot of work to write down all these questions. I prefer that your answers be in your notes. That way your notes, when you go back to study, you know you've got them all in there. So definitely use questions and um, review and all that kind of thing provided in your textbook because most of the times tests will include this kind of information. All right, so now that I've kind of showed you what information to pull out and how to take notes, one of the things I wanted to show you, and I will show you how to make um, flashcards and that kind of thing in the next video, but you can make flashcards from those notes, all right, and so you can have um, you know, like a term that you need to know along with the definition on the back. And I'm going to show you our study skills using these as well. But flashcards are a great way to help study for tests. So we'll talk about this more in another one. Um, but I wanted to show you my daughter's notes because she does a really good job at making them kind of colorful and fun and interesting. And so here you can kind of see she's got her header. She's got her bullets with other information in them. And then over here on the side, as you can see, she's drawn just little pictures that help her kind of associate that information with whatever it was she's reading. She also will go back through and highlight colors and things like that just to kind of help her when she's studying so she remembers what it is that she read. And she has written a little bit more. Her textbooks are a little bit more involved at her grade. She's in grade 8. But this is a great way to kind of make sure that you are getting all of the information covered in your notes. And then as you go through to study them, it's a lot easier to remember just these little bullet points than it would be if you were writing out a ton of notes. So those are my tips on what to write on your notes. One other idea is to just make them, if you don't like to draw pictures, just make things stand out that you know that you need to remember. So for example, say you really know, like mollusks is a large um, you know, section of things that you need to know. You can always do something just to kind of highlight that title in your notes. Now you might want to use color, you might want to use black and white so it's not conflicting with your color coding system, but just something to kind of make those things stand out. This is my title. Okay, right here. And the more visual that you can make your notes, the better it is to recall when you're studying for a test. If you're studying for a test and you're thinking, okay, I remember it was pink and it was it had the cloud around it, a lot of times just associating that image with this word will help you with recall when you're trying to get that information back out of your brain in order to take a test. Um, that will also help you remember, oh, that's right, I remember the pink swirlies, I remember the green that I highlighted, they're small invertebrates, that's what I needed to know. And so all of these little kinds of things that make your notes a little bit more interesting um, will help you remember sections. Now the other thing that I like to do is just to make my notes a little bit more interesting. So since this is a title, I might come back and just do something, you know, it doesn't have to be too fancy. I'm not the best artist in the world. My daughter's notes are a lot better than mine. But you can kind of just do something like this. Okay, this is my title. 
And so now I've got this fun little header up here, and I remember that when I was learning about sea stars and shellfish, I had this little separator, and I remember that it was blue, and underneath that was the mollusks, and it all just kind of correlates around. So when you're studying for your notes, it just makes it look more interesting. It makes it a little bit more easy to remember. It also makes it a little bit more fun, especially if you have a more visual, artistic child. Um, their notes can be a lot more um, just appealing to them, and it can help them remember. And then again, if you have something specific you need to remember you can just use one of these little sticky notes and just plop it on the side over here and you can even write a little information if needed but then as you're going to study for your test it's really easy to kind of find these sections that you need to for sure know about you could also put these at maybe chapter headers and put the chapter number right there just so it's easy for you to flip around through your notes if you're looking for something specific all right, now here's another sample of how to take notes. Now, as I showed you before, you can do them just on a regular lined paper, but I just wanted to take that same chapter and just kind of show you how you could make it a little bit more creative. So this is just a piece of a blank copy paper, and I just drew a line down the middle, kind of like I did on my lined paper. But then I just went ahead and made my own do um, bullet points, just kind of made my own decorations, I highlighted any vocabulary words in green, kind of little arrows under things that fall under this category but that I still need to focus on, and then I gave it just kind of a fun little header up here. Now this whole process makes your notes a little bit more fun. It invests your um, brain a little bit more in the information that you're writing down. You can certainly draw pictures, you could use colors, anything to kind of help you. Um, just remember the information, and it's really easy to see here that we're talking about shellfish and sea stars. There's a couple different kinds of them and what information is under there. It just makes visually um, a more appealing note to study and it also helps your brain recall that information better just because it's got a visual connection with the information. So there's a couple different ways to do notes as you can see. Just find something that appeals to you, um, especially if you're an artist you might like to embellish this with a few pictures and things like that. Now the one last thing that I did want to talk to you about is making your notes a little bit more interesting using lettering. Now I didn't do a whole lot of fancy lettering on here. Um, I did do some kind of tall and skinny letters up here for the top, but you can certainly make things look a little bit more interesting um, if you use just a little bit of a different font. It doesn't have to be anything super complicated. So let's take a closer look. All right, so the first one is the tall and skinny font. And as you can see, I've just made the letters tall and skinny. And it's super easy to do. This is a great font to use for um, headers or, um, you know, if you have a chapter header or even paragraph headers. And all you're doing is just making your letters really tall and skinny. All right, so that one's probably the easiest one to do. The next one are block letters, and they might look fancy, but they're not really. So I just wrote out my letters, and I like to use these for headers, even the sub, um, the sub chapter headers and things like that. And all you do is take your letters and just simply draw a line or a box kind of at the end of your letter. Now you can either you can even fill this in to make it a little bit more interesting, but that's a really really easy way to add some kind of um, just some kind of difference to a header or a title. Another good way is to do something like cursive. You can stretch it out, you can make it fancy, um, you know, you can kind of give it these little edges, that kind of thing. All right, so we've got our tall and skinny, our block letters, our cursive. Um, this one is kind of a calligraphy you can do, so I just wrote a basic word in cursive. And then you just, you just give it some kind of thicker tails uh, where a calligraphy pen might widen. That's also a really easy way to just kind of add some embellishments to a word, make it stand out a little bit more, and just make it a little bit more of a kind of a title page to a page. All right, so that one is super easy. All right, and then my next word I have for you, or font type, is curly. So I just write the word, and then just wherever you want, you can just add little swirls, this is kind of a more girly one, of course. And you don't necessarily need to add them all over. But just whatever you like, whatever's fun for you. And that one's super, super easy. And then my last one is just a kind of a chubby letter, I guess you could say. So all I'm doing here is just making my letters kind of short and fat. So it's kind of the opposite of tall and skinny up here. We're just going to go with short and fat. And so I just... You know, just make them nice and kind of 
chubby, kind of wide. And I'm usually using capitals when we are going with titles or any text I'm trying to um, stand out like this, unless I'm doing the cursive one, because I think it just makes it a little bit more prominent in your note taking. So as you can see, these are all really simple fonts that you can do here, um, and you don't even have to do these. You can just kind of make up your own, whatever you're good at, whatever you like. You can embellish your fonts as much or as little as you want. You don't even have to use any of these. Um, I do just like to use them as a way to make out, um, make certain text stand out, things that you need to kind of focus on, headers, titles, and things like that. And it helps your brain remember the information um, in a much more efficient manner. And as you'll notice, I don't have a lot of words written down here. Again, I'm not writing full sentences. I'm just writing short words and just the basics. It's a lot easier for me than to go through and remember mollusks. Their clamshells were used as money called wampum. They are small invertebrate. They have soft bodies and they have an exoskeleton or a hard shell. This is a lot easier for your brain to memorize and to remember. It's also going to be a lot easier for you to create flashcards off of this information as well. And I'll show you how to do that in the next video, but this is much more manageable for your brain to recall and remember than some large chunk of text. All right, now here is the last example that I had talked about, which was using mnemonic devices to remember things. So here are some algebra notes that my daughter uses all of the time. And one of the things that she likes to remember, because it can get confusing, especially as your um, equations get longer and longer, are the order of operations. And so we have them written down here. They're kind of color coded and in order so that she can go through and make sure that she is doing things in order. Something else that gets kind of confusing are um, dividing and multiplying positives and negatives. So she's got Got some of that information down here as well. Um, also, when you've got exponents inside and outside of parentheses, and just a couple other equations over here that she uses on a regular basis. So this is kind of like a little quick cheat sheet. By writing this down and color coding it, it helps your brain remember it as well. And it also helps you remember it because you've written it down, you've kind of colored it up. We did a little bit of fancy lettering up here at the top. And it just kind of helps the information stay in your brain a little bit easier. And the more that you look at this, the more that it imprints itself into your brain. And so if you go to take a test, you've got some information that hopefully you can read recall as needed for a test. All right, so we talked about how to take notes out of a book where you're writing down chapter headings and paragraph headings and bolded prints and things like that. But what happens if you're taking notes um, from a lecture where you're sitting in a classroom or even watching a video, DVD, or lesson or something like that? So I still like to go ahead and do the title of the um, session or lesson or whatever on the top here. I like to continue marking my important people, places, dates, events, and vocabulary down this side along with the corresponding information over here in the bulk of my notes. But if I'm doing a lecture, I also like to add this section on the bottom called the summary section. And I just block off a little section down here where I can write a few sentences that just give me the overall summary of what the lecture was about, maybe the main point that the professor was talking about, just something to kind of remind me the basic overall point of this. Now, you may or may not use this lesson uh, or this section down here. You might just write some keywords, things to remind yourself of the basic summary. But it is kind of nice when you're sitting in a large classroom of students where you're just having to take notes and depend on whatever you wrote down in the class that day to just have a little area down here where you can write down a summary. You could also use this area if you have any questions. Maybe you were busy writing something up here and you missed something, but you kind of had a clue about what you wanted to ask, write that down here with like maybe a question mark next to it or something so that you know that you can go back to your instructor or professor the next day and just ask, hey, I missed this in my notes, what was this on? Or you can also look it up when you get home. So I think having this layout for um, an online lecture or a class is a little bit better because it just gives you a little kind of note taking area down here where you can um, ask notes or just maybe write down the overall summary of the structure. And you can do this with your um, book lessons as well. Um, I just don't see that there's as much of a need for it, but it's just another way to organize your notes to help you make more sense of the information that you've read, remind you of things that you need to be reminded of, and things like that.
And then one last thing to note while you're taking um, notes from a lecture or say an online DVD is what to write down. How do you know what to write down? When you're listening to a lecture, professors will often focus or spend a larger amount of time on one subject. That is going to be something that you are for sure going to want to write down. If they have spent just one second kind of mentioning something quickly and then moved on, I wouldn't as much worry about that. But if they spent 10 minutes explaining, you know, a certain concept or a certain theory, then you're going to want to make sure to write that down because chances are that information will be on your test. Another thing you might consider doing is having a little notepad or sticky notepad or something nearby that you can write questions on. If you're busy um, taking notes over here and you heard a glimpse of something but you can't quite remember or you had a question on it, just jot it down over here. It doesn't have to be nice or neat or anything like that, but something that you can refer to later. You can go home and look up that information or you could ask your professor about it the next day if it's important information. And then one other thing about doing online lectures or a lecture in like an actual college classroom or high school classroom is sometimes there will be a downloadable study guide or note-taking guide or even if it's a slide presentation sometimes you can download the slides and that can also really help as a study aid as well you can take notes directly on the slides sometimes um, I still like making notes in kind of my own format because the more input you put into the notes the more you're gonna get out of them but it's still a good study guide to make sure you maybe didn't miss anything a lot of times you know words that you need to define will be on there and things like that so that is, those are my just kind of basic tips for taking notes during an online lecture or sitting in a lecture hall. All right, guys, so those are my note-taking tips. I hope you enjoyed them. If you have any suggestions on things that have worked for you, please make sure to leave a comment below because there's lots of different ways to do this, and the important thing is to come up with something that works best for your brain. Other people don't need to understand your notes, just you do. So come up with a system that really works for you and just use that, stick with that. Um, if you have any suggestions, like I said, please leave those below. If you have any questions, you're welcome to email me. I will also put all of my information below as well. And I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you next time.